ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number two, race number two and three. Yeah, we'll get onto that in a bit. Of our my team career mode here with Batting GP, which is the name we went with in our little colour scheme. And we've got this department event in front of us right now. It's telling us all about it. You can just have a little read. Personnel department has asked us to deal with this. We have a couple of options here. Take your time. What you decide to do will have consequences. And as the guy was saying about this department development, we'll have a few of these um, these meetings and just see what's going on. But I think here we were deciding between pace and awareness here, plus seven either way for Robert Schwartzman. And in Thanks. the end, we decided to I go know with these pace. kinds of decisions can be challenging, but I think you made the right call. And the guy talks over us. But yeah, we went with pace in the end, and now we're advancing through to the season break. We've got a load of parts going on the car, a load of different admin duties going on in the background. And now we're Our approaching the season the break edition. where we're going to press. You'll be on the car ready for the next race weekend. To have a look at a couple of stuff that has gone on the car and has not gone on the car. But first of all, we're going into the facilities. Now, this is where we was having a bit of a dilemma. What did I want to upgrade? I looked at a few options. I even looked at the driver simulation, which is what I did last year. I upgraded that, but this year we might be going for the old icon drivers at an early possible uh, chance, earliest possible opportunity. Now we're just having a quick look at the powertrain, and I think we go with the quality control. I believe we go quality control here for the powertrain because it makes sense. It takes away a little bit of the failure problems which we've been having for quite a few of our parts. And now we're going to go and potentially do the same for the chassis, was it, or the aerodynamics? It's the aerodynamics we went for. And there you are, two departments upgraded. We've got our season break now before the Spanish Grand Prix, which we've taken already. Now we're back from the season break. And as you can see there, we've got four things already happening. I'm not really sure what like caused them to happen, but they're happening anyway. Um, and then we just add the other two events on and we now advance to have a look at our parts that are being built. Now we notice that we can't do an extra one in the aero, so we just had a quick look. The chassis... I think we were having one built at this point, or are we just building one now? No, we're going to build one now. We're going to do the roll dampers to try and improve that. Now we get another personal, the personal personality department development. needs some assistance to reach a resolution here. Uh, it's about the gym. It will give the driver, the second driver, Schwartzman, Not a little bit decision, more focus. You handled plus it well. Thanks. Two arrows up on the focus. Now this is the thing that I couldn't figure out, guys. But if you press um, the session you're currently activating on. And then you can bring up the practice sessions, which I finally found. I couldn't find them for the first race. I couldn't find them for a little while. But I finally found them. And this is the new quick practice events. They're very straightforward. You don't have to do practice anymore. You can press these options. Look, 100% success, 50% success, 25% success. The one that takes the less success, the less uh, percentage, is the one you can do two in. So... You know, once you upgrade things and everything, it might be easier. It might be a higher success rating for them ones. But as as of right now, we're going for all the higher success ratings to try and get the development plan, uh, all the programs done. And hopefully they all go through clean. But we're doing the track acclimatization here in P1, in practice one. And we're trying to get them all completed so that we can advance forward into doing the other programs in the other sessions. And this is another 70% success, 8 minutes. But the thing is, the 70% chance does not mean it will be completed. We've done all them ones, and now we can go across and do a tyre management at the end of the session, so we have a little bit of time. But as I was stating before, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to work. That one worked. I'm pretty sure... We had, to, we had a look at another one here, and it didn't work. We tried the 25% one, and it failed. It was worth a risk. We tried it, and it did not work. So now we progress now into P2, where we go for a 70% success program, and it fails on the tire management with the engine power. We're going to try it again, and ha can it pass this time? Can it? No, it failed again. That's, that's three fails in a row now for our programs. We tried the 50% one to see if we can do two at once, and that failed also. So right now, 
the practice programs for us here have not worked out. It's another fail. We're trying again. This is the fourth attempt, and it finally passes. We get there eventually, and then we try the internal combustion engine, and that fails as well. Oh, my God. God, I don't know what's going on here. We try 50% rear downforce. That fails. But now we're into practice three. And we're just going to do the race program to get 100% success there. But we use 17 minutes and 30 of our time in this session. Now we've got a 70% chance of this one going through. And it does. It goes through purple as well, which is lovely. And now we've got another one. Engine power, 70%. And it fails. We need this one to pass, really. We need to complete our race programs just so we know what kind of pace we've got. It's a track that I really struggle at on this new game. Um, traction around here is next to none, really. It doesn't exist. And as you can see, we now jumped into qualifying. I didn't really even leave a bit in there for quali, so you didn't know we're jumping to quali, which is my bad completely. And, um, yeah, so, sorry for that, guys. I forgot to leave in the qualifying, but we bin it! We bin it in qualifying! We were only beating Latifi. We pushed as hard as we possibly can. And here's a replay camera of our mistake. And we just lost the back end. It was terrible from us, to be honest with you. We went around. There wasn't an awful lot we could do. And it is what it is. And we are out of qualifying. We were going to be out at the very bottom anyway, 21st or 22nd. But then we managed to, uh, to spin into the wall, crash out. We're 3.9 seconds off the front. Welcome along then to what promises to be another fascinating Spanish Grand Prix. A race which saw Max Verstappen win on his first ever appearance with the Red Bull team in 2016. This after the dramatic coming together of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg on the first lap. Will we see more moments for the scrapbook here today? The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya then. A high speed 2.89 mile circuit which demands an efficient downforce package and bravery on the part of the driver especially through the blind right of turn nine, which we might just see taken flat this weekend. And that is where the commentary for the intro ended. For some reason, there was no more to it. So what we did is we advanced forward after we seen Nikita Mazepin there on the grid. And we will now go to... Before the we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Perez, Lando Norris and Ricardo, Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel and Pierre Gasly, Stroll, Fernando Alonso, Yuki Tsunoda and Ocon, Mick Schumacher, Raikkonen, Robert Schwartzman, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Russell, Mazepin, Latifi, and Baxter. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. As you saw there on the grid run through, we're lacking a lot of pace. We're just going to talk over Jeff here. He has nothing important to say because he wants a top 10 position. At, that's unrealistic, Jeff. I can't stress that enough. But yeah, um, so. It was a messy qualifying. It did not go to plan at all. And um, we are starting from last place after we crashed into the wall at the end of the session, which was not ideal in any way possible. Realistically, what we can hope from this race is potentially a safety car to bring us in, bring us in nice and close. Without a safety car, we are pretty much screwed, in my opinion. Because our lack of pace is very evident around this circuit. We have no grip. We have no power. We can't do much. But we now go to the five red lights. And it's go, go, go here for the Spanish Grand Prix. And as you can see, we get a very, very good launch off the line. Getting alongside Mazepin. We're in the tiny bit of slip through level. Look deeply. Russell, Giovinazzi. Loads of people going side by side in the third one. Mazepin just dives everybody and gets past us all. Schwartzman on our outside. Schwartzman's there. Can we squeeze past our teammate? And maybe Mazepin as well. We're thinking about it. We're looking at options. We're a bit erratic on the wheel here around Spain because, to be honest with you, I felt no, no, like, force feedback on my controller. You can sometimes feel it. But what a dive bomb that is on Raikkonen. 
Sometimes you can feel the vibration when you're turning a bit too much, but on this track I felt nothing. I had a few engine mode glitches which are evident in the game here, early cycle, but things should go away eventually. But oh my god, what a dive bomb! That is from Schumacher. We come from absolutely miles back and pass Mick Schumacher nice and easily. On lap one, we're already up into P15, and as you can see there, we nearly lost the back end like we did in qualifying. We did that in, in quali a few times, one time I didn't show you, but yeah, we did that already a couple times, in quali, and the one that retired us was on the different corner. But yeah, it's um, this is a very difficult track on this year's game to, to uh, drive, and that was exceeding track limits. I had two wheels still on the track, but the game wants to be harsh about it, then fair enough. Now, there's already a gap forming to Ocon in front of us. We need to just settle into this race now, try and find our grip, try and find the car's biting point, because at the moment we literally feel very uncomfortable. And as you can see here, coming around that same corner, the back end just kicks out on the curb. The curbs are deadly on this game. But we continue as we are, trying our very best just to can keep the, control in, uh, the car in a straight line. Lost the back end two or three times now around that final few quarters. Now Raikkonen is thinking about a move at us. We're going to try and defend it. But we defended a little bit too late. There's been contact. Raikkonen's lost a little bit of his front wing. And something I can also tell you guys. We've lost a little bit of our rear wing with that contact. We've damaged our rear wing as well as he's damaged his front wing. But there you go. You can see Mick Schumacher on the safety car restart has retired. Um, well, the virtual, I think it was the safe, might have been a safety car restart, virtual safety car restart, I'm not overly sure. I can't remember where that comes from, but Ricardo passes us there, but he gets a tiny bit of damage, I think, on overtaking us because he was impatient. But then we dive him into turn one, and Leclerc's come out of the pits right behind Ricardo. Will he, will he pass him nice and early, or will he lose time stuck behind the wounded McLaren? And in front of us, Lando Norris and Verstappen, but obviously they aren't our battle today. Our battle is to try and finish as high up as possible, maybe sneak a point or two, but it's probably unlikely. But as you can see, Leclerc now, all over the back of us, forces us into breaking extremely late. He goes to the cutback line, and what an overtake that is by Charles Leclerc. He passed us nice and easy. He's up a position now into P10 for Charles Leclerc, and here's a replay of the overtake, it was absolutely beautiful for Charles Leclerc, for Charles Leclerc passes us, and he's up that position, now we are literally tentative at this point, we're taking our time, we're trying not to do anything stupid, and there's Gasly going down our inside nice and easily for the Alfa Tori, got the same power unit in the back of the car, the Honda as well, but we're just going to try and go our fastest around here, I do not like going through that corner at all, it always provides me to kick off the track or make a mistake, it isn't a good section for us, and we are now, oh my god, we nearly lost the back end, we are fighting the car, we just get out of DRS to the activation point, otherwise we'd have had it, but we just lost the back end just before the activation line, and now we're probably a sitting duck to the uh, cars behind us, now behind us, we've got Perez, who is also being powered by a Honda unit in that red bull. He locks up as well, but we let him go, and we just follow Perez. And as you can see, he's pulled out one, nearly two seconds on us already. Schwartzman's on the back of us. We've just backed off, eased off the throttle there, let Schwartzman through. He's up now into P13, or P14. Now we've got Giovinazzi about to have a go at us as well. Giovinazzi down the inside. That's another position lost. We're struggling. We are officially struggling in this race. And oh no, we've lost it. This is how we, this is one of the mistakes we've been making in uh, qualifying. But we get very lucky and it's only a front wing damage. But luckily for us, the safety car came out and it spares our blushes, to be honest with you. But now we pit again, the lap after. Watch this pit stop, guys. Watch this. 1.8 second pit stop, which I believe equals the record for a pit stop in real life. 1.8 second pit stop from the Baton GP crew. What a pit stop that is. What well done from the lads. They're doing their part today. It's just a shame that their driver's letting them down massively. I will learn that this track eventually is just one I'm finding very hard to adapt to on the new game. I'll get there eventually. You know, you have to. 
but it's uh, one of the reasons why the next race will not be actually drove by me. I'm going to be simulating the next race, which is Monaco, and it will be in this episode as well. It's just not worth it for me to try that track yet, because I did a little practice around it. Um, I put it in the wall immediately. So for me, it's not going to happen. So I'm having a little break from Monaco. I don't fancy it. But as you can see now, we are up behind Raikkonen. We're pushing as hard as we can. And we make the same mistake, but I don't believe... Oh, no, we're out. Oh, we're out. I don't believe we did anything wrong there. Here's a replay off board, and we just go spiralling off into the wall. And another replay on board of us. I don't believe we did anything wrong there. There was not an over amount of throttle. There wasn't an over amount of steering lock. It's just this game can kick you. It can kick you in the arse. You make one mistake to around. Else. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. En route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Let's have a look then at the driver's standings. Max Verstappen's excellent result today sees him take over as leader of the Drivers' Championship. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Well, Lance Stroll would be my pick. He managed to keep a cool head today whilst pushing through the field. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Red Bull take over as championship leaders. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula 1. Now, yeah, that was very disappointing. Schwartzman gets 15th as well. And a part has failed as well, just to add to our problems, guys. Absolute disastrous weekend from us. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. We, we had a look at that because we thought we had enough points, but obviously we're only 13 or what, 17 off, so it wasn't much, but yeah, it's very frustrating, um, not really sure how to approach it, but we're gonna, we're gonna put a department on here, we're gonna upgrade the spark plugs, give us a little bit more power, and we're also gonna improve the IC materials as well, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say, guys, very frustrating. Here we are in the HQ of our newest Formula 1 team, we've got an awful lot to talk about, so let's jump straight in. Upgrades to your facilities seem to have stalled. Is there no more room for improvement? We jump straight for, you forward here into an interview with Will Buxton. We're just going to try and big up the team wherever we can at the moment because we need the morale. Your second driver seems to be getting much more comfortable with their car. Have you been focusing on their development? Would it be safe to say that in terms of team orders, your career comes first in your team your team's been picking up points fairly yeah. consistently big up echo here we're just going to talk over buxton we need to pick them up the just get a little bonus very good idea what are your predictions for your team going into this season and realistically we can't make a prediction we just have to say we're trying to fight for some points well thanks a lot for inviting us here it's been fantastic and here we go, here's the one that I said, Monaco, where we will be simulating, guys. It's not worth me trying it yet, because I will crash, and it won't be worth watching. I'll probably crash that one. So we're going to skip, simulate all of it, for now, and let's see how we do. If we ever press it. There we let's go. And Lewis Hamilton had. wins the Grand the Prix, what a second. So Some you amazing press, uh, talent stop and get track four. Today. But Anthony, we finish P15 with Schwartzman It's time to check out the constructors' standings. The Mercedes moved it to the top of the table. It was better than if it's we did it. If we did it, it would have been a disaster. Of Formula but One action. our I AI did it, and our AI next. finished P15. So P15 works for me. It's a great result. But, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you later.